depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC. Coming to you from the Virtualization Practice, I'm Tom Howarth and this is Episode 2 of our weekly video news roundup. This week in Conference Land we had DockerCon and Red Hat Summit. Very old Mike Cavis was in DockerCon where they containerized San Francisco and Edward Halecki attended Red Hat Summit in Boston. DockerCon continued to regale us with tales of Nirvana and how the world would be filled with love and peace if only we moved to containers. But okay, what about the other 75% of the computing world, namely those that use Windows as the Microsoft of their operating system of choice? Well hey, guess what? They can see you and you can now see them. Microsoft demoed a Docker container written in Visual Studio on a Windows 10 server running on Linux. But more importantly, considering the vendor doing the demonstration, they showed a Docker app written on Linux running as a container on Windows 10. This to me shows two things. One, the infrastructure layer is truly becoming invisible. But more importantly, it shows how far Microsoft as a company has come in less than 20, 18 months since the CAO change. So what else was announced? Trusted Registry, the product formerly known as Docker Hub Enterprise. This looks interesting, but it's most basic. It's a repository for Docker objects. But it hooks into Microsoft Active Directory or OpenLDAP and provides role-based access co controls, audit, event logging. This is going to be useful for managing the security and compliance requirements in a Docker environment. DTR is its useful mystically known as part of Docker's commercialization project and is available at a subscription cost with prices ranging from 150 a month to standard contact sales and sell your second child prices. Docker and Core OS announced plans for standard for containers. Now considering there's not a standard for virtual machines after nearly 10 years, this is a very, very hard sell. You can't call OVF a standard format, it's a package, not a runtime VM that can be easily moved between di differing hypervisor formats. However, all that said, some of the names in the foundation which amongst others include AWS, former Fremenis, Cisco, EMC, VMware, Google, Red Hat, Microsoft can get over their bickering and commercial interests. This will be a massive win for Docker and the container industry in general if they can pull it off. But to me, the biggest announcement of DockerCon was not from Docker, it was from VMware and their announcement of Project Bonovo. This allows containers are selected by the trusted registry to run inside a VM. Yep, that's right, a VM. What Bonneville does is move the container engine to the host level. And the containers are run as a micro VM automatically created by a method called Instant Clone. Personally, I like this as my infrastructure does not have to change. As Ben Corey, one of the principal engineers working on the Bonneville project, stated in a blog post he wrote on the subject, the principles of Bonneville take a pure approach to the notion containers on the hypervisor. In the abstract, container is a binary executable packaged with dependencies and intended for exception, execution in a private namespace with optional resource constraints. A container is a pool of compute resources. Excuse me, I'll start that one again. <coughs> a container host is a pool of compute resources with the necessary storage and network infrastructure to manage a number of containers. And around this, you have an ecosystem that provides dependency management, image resolution, cloud storage, etc. Now, companies such as Microsoft and CoreOS are successfully challenging the assumption that a container must necessarily be a Linux construct. Now, if we accept these descriptions of containers and container hosts, then arguably a VM fits into the description of a container perfectly, and a hypervisor or some part thereof is an equally suitable container host. There's compelling advantages to hardware virtualization in this brave new containerized world, and with Bonneville, VMware can deliver them with minimal additional costs. This definition, it just resonates with me. Personally, I've been struggling with the concept of containerization. We had this argument in the early noughties with VMware and Solaris Zones et al. But my hipster friends are telling me all this time, it's different, and I kept asking how. To me, it's always seemed application virtualization for Linux. But now, I understand it a little better, and to me it's still application virtualization, but not just for Linux or Windows, 
but for a write once execute anywhere world and this is actually of value I do not care if a particular cloud is not running my particular flavor of OS or hypervisor my application will just run there my infrastructure becomes invisible and my focus moves to the application which is a much more useful place from a business perspective infrastructure does not run my business it's a cash sink but applications are the vessels that allow me access to the company's lifeblood my CRM application data my sales data financial inf information etc all in all I think DockerCon was a successful conference and hopefully we can get greater insight from Mike Cavis on these announcements now on to Red Hat Summit in Boston this conference was a more muted affair but that's not to say it was dead Red Hat are a surprising company and I have to admit my knowledge of him went as far as Red Hat Enterprise Linux and that's to my shrine there was a raft of announcements here albeit a lot more low key surprising one to me because I didn't even know Red Hat owned it was an announcement to an update to JBoss and AMQ from middleware to version 6.2 they announced a mobile platform which stemmed from their acquisition of Feed Henry in October of 2014. By coupling Feed Henry product set with their JBoss middleware and OpenShift Pass platform, they now offer a technology stack that's able to execute mobile centric workloads and to integrate them with their existing infrastructure. What is interesting that they state that they are one of the only companies that can deliver a fully integrated stack. Arguably, this is true. They provide a hypervisor in the form of KVM, a cloud management product, OpenShift, storage layer, Gluster, Ceph, and even an OS in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Arguably they're missing a network stack, but then so are most of the others with the exception of VMware, but they don't have an OS layer. Another major announcement was of their Atomic Enterprise platform for the deployment of secure certified Linux containers. <laughs> What's interesting about this is it also supports the rollout of Enterprise Linux as well as Atomic Host instances. It uses Kubernetes for orchestration. In fact, it smells a lot like Docker's trusted registry. Red Hat also released Access Insight, an analytics, an analytics and management and operations product to monitor this brave new world that's being run by pure Red Hat software. I have to admit I need to spend a little more focus on Red Hat. They have some interesting things going on there. Okay, let's move on to news from our sponsors. App Dynamics have released version 4.1 of their application intelligence platform. The headline feature of this release is Unified Monitoring, an application-centric solution that traces, monitors transactions from the end user through the entire application stack to help in the investigation of performance issues thereby enabling a better user experience and we all know there's only one metric that counts user experience Intigua released an update to their product to enable users to tighten the security of their customers enterprises whilst driving efficiencies across their IT operations roles introducing new access and role based access management tool for self healing capabilities it's a nice little update go and have a look Ixia is a new Chief Marketing Officer in the name of Marie Hatta. This industry veteran joins after successful stints at Checkpoint and Cisco. This is a canny hire for Ixia, for Marie has the credentials to do good things there. Manage Engine have released a migration tool for Hot Manager that enables network admins using SolarWinds and PRTH to try Hot Manager without having to start from scratch. The tool migrates devices, monitors, syslog trap rules and users etc to op manager to enable a better understanding of the product in a more realistic environment to determine the usability and value of their solution. New Relic have hired their first CIO in the form of Yvonne, Yvonne Wazanar. She's been promoted from the role of Senior Vice President of Operations. This is shown a presence of mind. They're effectively eating their own dog food here. She's been tasked we're taking a closer look at their internal data and management up thereof. For those of you who want to go to VMworld in San Francisco this year but can't get your employer to foot the bill, VMware Tur v -Turbo, VM Turbo are offering a chance to win two full conference passes for this year's conference. VMworld is the place to be this year if you're in cloud virtualization and use computing. Check out VM Turbo's website for further details on how to apply. 
VMware have opened their second data center for their v, vCloud hybrid service in Europe. This means that those customers with compliance re requirements surrounding data locality now have a legitimate op option for vCloud hybrid for European based entities, especially with DR in mind. It gets around the issues of the US government being able to subpoena any or all data that's stored in a continental USA. Xenos have, allowed the re have announced the release of VMware NSX Zenpack. This provides for this. I'll, I'll start that again, sorry. <coughs> Xenos have announced the release of VMware NSX Zenpack. That's easy for you to say with your teeth in. Provides further integration of their product with the VMware product sets, providing graphical model of the relationships between network components, the hypervisors, and the virtual machines that they support. So, that's what happened this week and last. If you have any stories that you think would be interesting, please send a mail to news at virtualization product, virtualizationpractice.com. Thank you for listening. See you all next week.